This is a Digital Lake camcorder, and over here I have stacks of Digital Lake tapes. My goal is to dub these tapes over to a file format in the least lossy way possible, coming up on Thrifty AV. There are several options I can use to get the footage on these tapes to a digital file. One of them is with a DVD recorder. This DVD recorder has a Firewire input. This camcorder has a Firewire output. Sony calls it iLink, but it is Firewire. The issue with that is DVDs are lossier than the compression used on these tapes. So I would essentially be losing data if I dub over to DVD and then rip the DVDs. Another option would be to use the analog outputs on this camcorder and then an analog capture device like this Diamond Multimedia VC500. The issue with that is when you go from digital to analog and then back to digital, you can have issues with black level, video level, chroma level, chroma hue, and you're probably going to lose some sharpness as well. So it would probably look even worse than using the DVD recorder. Now modern computers do not have a Firewire interface. I have this old PCI Firewire card, but on a new computer, they use PCIe and PCIe, PCI, are incompatible. So I actually bought a new card, this Linkstech PCIe Firewire card. Yes, you can get a new Firewire card. So let's unbox this thing. This only has a 30 day warranty and I've been sitting on it for almost half that long. Look at the size of this card compared to the old PCI card. And as you can see, uh, PCI Express has a notch right here that's lacking on the old PCI card. Also, those pins are closer together than on the old PCI card. So let's plug this into the computer. Hey, anything else in here? Hey, look, I got a Firewire cable. I got some software and this could be used in a case that has half height bays. I have three slots to choose from here. It'll work in any of these. This one has the most lanes, so it's best for a graphics card. So I think I'll use this one right here. And it is installed. This does not have an external power header like this old one did. So I don't have to worry about running any external power to this card. Might as well screw this down, keep it secure. All right, I'm booted up. I'm curious what's on this disc, but this computer does not have an internal optical drive. So I'm gonna use this light on external drive that I talked about in an earlier video. We'll do the 64 bit driver. Might as well try out the video cable that came with the card. I want to load up a tape. I've ran into a little problem playing back tapes. You can see that it's stuttering and has blocks and dropout. Let's open up this cleaning tape and run this through the camcorder and see if it fixes my issue here. And it's been a little bit over 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, eject it. Well, I'm still having problems. Now this footage was not shot on this camera. So I might try shooting fresh footage on this camera and playing it back on this camera and seeing if I can transfer that footage. I did a little test recording with the camcorder and it gave a cleaning cassette warning that the heads needed to be cleaned. I've already cleaned them. 
But then that cleared up and everything worked fine. All right, the blockiness is gone. Audio is no longer dropping out, so I'm now ready to do some transferring of old footage. For video capture, there's a bunch of software titles to pick from. I'm going to use the capture feature on PowerDirector 18. If I use the MPEG-2 profile, I might as well be recording on a regular DVD recorder. I'm going to choose AVI-DV because that is the native format for Digital 8. I'm about to show you footage that I shot at the Chevy 500 at Texas Motor Speedway in 2002. Please keep in mind that I was shooting this on a handheld camcorder. Now this camcorder does have image stabilization, but still, it's not the optimal way to shoot an IndyCar race. Also, this footage is interlaced. But before I post it to YouTube, I'm going to de-interlace it. And even if I didn't de-interlace it, YouTube would de-interlace it. So it's not going to look exactly like it looked when it was broadcast. So let's take a look.
I was able to find the entire broadcast from ABC of the 2002 Chevy 500 if you want to watch the whole thing. Links in the description. I have a lot more footage here to digitize. It's not all going to end up on Thrifty AV. Some of it will end up on my sister channel, Obscure AV. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, including a new patron. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.